All right, everybody. Um, welcome to the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. We are super excited to have you participating in this event today. So we've got um, some fantastic schools with us here today, um, and each will have six minutes to share more about their institution. Um, but we'll be around for the entire session um, should you have any questions. My name is Amanda, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I wanted to share a few housekeeping items that we do have. First, I wanna make sure that your cameras and microphones are off um, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, also know that you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. They will be able to see that um, and access it and respond back. And this is just one of the many different sessions happening today. So be sure to check out the schedule on the website at strivescan.com. And just so you all know, um, this session is being recorded. And so you can see that at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And that is all that I've got on my side as far as housekeeping goes. So with that, I want to turn it over to Al um, from Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Great, good evening, everyone. Um, let's turn my screen. There we go. All right. My name is Al Seitz. I'm the Director of Admissions at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. We are one of the six state maritime academies located in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Um, we have about 1,300 undergraduate students on our campus. If you add in our graduate programs, we're at 1,400 students. We're a public institution from the state of Massachusetts focused on STEM-based education with hands-on learning. We have over 15 Division III athletic programs as well as club and intramural sports as well. We have seven very distinct majors. Our Premier programs are marine engineering and marine transportation, where students can get their Coast Guard licensure to work on any ocean going vessel in, in the United States. We also have facilities engineering, energy systems engineering, emergency management, international maritime business, and our marine science safety and environmental protection. All of our programs are hands on. They're required to do either C term or co ops or internships as part of their education. And they lead um, our graduates for rewarding careers, both on land and on sea. One of the unique features of our program is we're out of all the maritime academies in the United States, we're the only one that is fully regimented. That means that our students are learning to become leaders as they practice their skills and their career focused education. Their enhanced academic program helps them be successful in their careers, and it, it acts as a leadership lab while they're on campus. Students have the opportunity to uh, take charge as they mature up the ranks, as they promote from sophomore, juniors, and seniors, become squad leaders, platoon leaders, company commanders, and even the regimental commander. Students are not required to join the military as if you were to join a national academy, However, students do have the option to join either the Strategic Sea Lip Midshipman Program with the United States Navy and serve in the reserves as a commissioned officer or in the United States Army as a Lieutenant through the ROTC program or as a Lieutenant in the Coast Guard through our MarGrad program. About 10 to 15% of our students do pursue this option upon graduation and the Academy will help prepare you to do that. This is our new vessel that's gonna be coming to campus next year, $300 million training vessel that all of the Maritime Academies will be receiving. The funding has been raised by the US, um, US government. So we're very excited about that. And we're also receiving later on this year, uh, the 1894 completely refurbished 
uh, 100 foot Ernestine and Morrissey, which students will have the opportunity to learn how to rig sails and do a lot of great um, training with that. Our students do have the opportunity to participate in collegiate sports, men and women's and co-ed, as well as club and intramural sport and various clubs and organizations affiliated with their major and career path, as well as traditional student life organizations as well. We're typically looking for students that have at least the 3.0 GPA college prep curriculum in high school. Um, our average SATs are about 1,000. However, SATs are optional. For the upcoming academic year, we will be requiring SATs for the Energy Systems Engineering Program. Um, we're definitely going to be looking at students' core classes in high school, particularly math and science, or the STEM career paths. Uh, we're a member of the Common App. Our early action deadline will be November 1st, with priority deadline of February 15th, and the final deadline is April 15th. We're looking for your high school transcripts, two letters of recommendation, your essay, and as I said, SAT, ACT scores are optional. However, they are required for the Energy Systems Program. Tuition room and board for out-of-state students is between 46 and 49,000 with some additional costs. We do provide merit scholarships for students above a 3.0. We also provide uh, full tuition scholarships for top academic uh, achievers, also need-based scholarships. And for those students that are outside of the New England area, we also give a $10,000 uh, maritime investment initiative to reduce your tuition to almost what students pay in-state. We provide various visitor programs throughout the year. We have a spring open house coming up in the month of May. We also provide daily tours. We also provide um, general info sessions with our admissions officers online, cadet chats. If you want to find out more information, you can go to our website and register for those tours. Students, as you can imagine, must be fully vaccinated to visit the campus. If you have any additional questions, you can uh, scan this um, QR code and we'll put you on our mailing list to get more information, or you can go to our website and there's uh, my contact information if you have any additional questions. And we look forward to seeing you up on Cape Cod, Massachusetts uh, and to answer all your questions. Thank you. Thanks so much, Al, we really appreciate that. And so next up, we've got Emily from the University of Tampa. Awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, hi everybody, my name is Emily Mayer. I'm an admissions counselor at the University of Tampa. The University of Tampa is a private mid-sized university located in the heart of downtown Tampa. We do like to say that we have the best of both worlds as we are surrounded by an urban environment. We really do have a nice centralized community campus feel. About 9,600 students uh, from all 50 states and over 130 different countries. We have an extremely diverse student body. So you get to meet people from all around the world. And the average domestic student actually comes from about 900 miles away. So a really unique experience for our out-of-state students. And for the 20% of our students that do come from in-state Florida, they get a really nice out-of-state university experience. We do have 20 NCAA Division II sports and we are extremely competitive with loads of national championships and state championships that we've been winning over the past couple of years. Academically, our faculty to student ratio is about one to 17 with an average class size of 22 students per class. 90% of our courses are taught by our faculty members with the highest terminal degree in their field. And every single class that you will take at UT is taught by those faculty members as we have no TAs or graduate assistants that teach our classes. We have over 200 different areas of studies for students to choose from. So whether you know exactly what you wanna study or are completely undecided, which is our most popular major of choice freshman year, we'll have something for you and you're able to perfectly craft together an educational experience that fits exactly what you wanna do with your four years at UT. Uh, we were ranked as the number one best college location in the state of Florida back in 2020. Uh, and we really do have a great location in the heart of downtown Tampa, cornering tons of opportunities for internships, jobs, as well as things to do on the weekend. 
We do really emphasize experiential education at UT through undergraduate research and internships, which are encouraged as early as freshman year. We really want students to get experience both inside and out of the classroom and not to just sit in the lecture hall and take exams, but to really get hands-on experience through simulations, lab work, and through different facilities that we've put in place. We have an off-site marine biofield station, so students are able to take our UT-provided boats off onto the water, bring back samples, and conduct research. We have state-of-the-art nursing program facilities, Shark Tank inspired pitch rooms for our entrepreneurship students, 3D printers and laser cutters for our digital art students, and a financial trading lab where finance students are actually able to trade real money in the livestock market and play, play around with what that's like in the real world. So once they graduate, they know exactly what they want to do and have experience doing it. We really want students to love where they live and learn. We have more than 300 different clubs and organizations for students to join. So whether it's Greek life, club sports, clubs related to their major, or even hammock club, there's lots of unique ways for students to get involved and engage and really find their group of people. When it comes to applying, we do have a couple of different application windows. We have early action one, two, regular decision, and then rolling applications. Important to note that none of our deadlines are binding and all deposits are fully refundable until May 1st. We are historically an early application and early deposit school. So the earlier you can apply to UT, the better. Typically, the faster turnaround you're going to get as a return on that application. So you can see that middle row being dates to apply by and the row below that being the date that you get a notification from us on your application. In order to apply, we're gonna need your application, which you can either use our UT app, the Common app, or we also accept the Coalition for College application. Along with that application, we're gonna need your official high school transcript and essay, as well as a letter of recommendation. I appreciate your time and taking time out of your evening in order to listen to me and learn a little bit about, little bit about the University of Tampa. Hopefully we get to see you on our campus soon. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. My information is listed on the screen. Fantastic, thanks so much, Emily. Um, next up, we've got Emily Group from Duke Quinshawn University. Alrighty, thank you. Okay, yeah, so as I mentioned, um, I am Emily Gerby from Duke Quinchon University. This is a joint venture university that Duke opened up in China. Um, all classes are taught in English um, and you do spend most of your time in China, but you have the opportunity also to um, earn a, to, I'm sorry, to spend a semester at Duke as well during your junior year. And no matter where you end up spending that semester during your junior year, you'll earn both degrees from both Duke Quinchon University in China and Duke University in the US. Now, I know I don't have um, a ton of time right now to, to go into too many details, but I do want to point out that there's a QR code on every page that um, has a link to our um, virtual events. We have virtual campus tours and information sessions. Um, the campus tours are led by um, current students and the information sessions are led by myself and other staff members and they um, go a little bit longer than six minutes. So um, I hope you'll join one of those as well. So you may not have heard of Quinchan before. It is a pretty, um, it's considered to be a small city by Chinese standards, but it's still about 2 million people. So there's a lot going on in that area. Um, it's only about 20 minutes via high-speed rail from both Suzhou and Shanghai. Su Suzhou being about the population of New York City, Shanghai being one of the biggest cities in the world. So there's a lot going on in that area. So, um, Duke really wanted to open up this um, institution in China to try to like reinvent the traditional notion of what it means to be a liberal arts and sciences institution. So I know if you've um, you've attended any info sessions with liberal arts institutions, you've probably heard these buzzwords like experiential and interdisciplinary, but I do think that we kind of take it to another level. Um, one way we do that with interdisciplinary learning is through our blended disciplines. So all of our majors are, um, you pick both a major and a disciplinary track. Um, and those are housed within arts and humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. But no matter what you're majoring in, you'll take classes in all of those areas. And some of your single classes may be taught by um, multiple professors from different academic areas. And then on the experiential component, we actually have classes that are just Monday through Thursdays. Fridays are set aside for co-curricular education, like field trips, research, um, travel opportunities, um, community service, things like that. 
we obviously don't want to just send students from all around the world to China to be within a US style institution. Um, it's really about, um, you know, taking advantage of the location that you're in and really seeing um, what is in that local area and, and learning from the location which you are at. Um, additionally, we have a pretty innovative semester schedule. So we follow the um, somewhat the, the Duke academic calendar. We have a fall semester that runs August to December, and then we have a spring semester that runs January to May, which this is kind of non-traditional in um, Chinese higher education. It's definitely more of the US style, but each semester is split into two seven week sessions. So um, you're only taking about two to three classes at a time, but it is a little bit more intensive since you're essentially taking a semester's course um, and uh, condensing it into um, seven weeks. But you do get off um, winter break in between December um, to January and then also Chinese holidays throughout the year, which is um, our students definitely like to take advantage of those to travel around Asia and travel around China. These are our majors and of course these are all listed online so I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I just wanted to kind of give you a glimpse into um, how our majors and blended disciplines are set up so the underlined words are the actual major and the hollow bullet points underneath are the disciplinary tracks that you choose so you'll choose both a major and a disciplinary track. But you don't actually declare a major till the end of your sophomore year so there's plenty of time to take exploratory courses to figure out what you want to do. There's also plenty of room in your schedule because there's about a third of your courses are elective so again plenty of um, room to explore or combine interests. We are a pretty new institution. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but we did open in 2013 with our graduate programs, but just started bringing in undergrads in fall 2018. So we're actually having our first graduating class this May. Um, and so as you can imagine, as a new institution, all of our facilities are brand new as well. So we have state-of-the-art lab facilities in our innovation building here um, that has both um, teaching and research labs as well as an artificial intelligence lab. Um, and we are actually um, very focused on sustainability as well. We're the only LEED certified campus in China. We currently have students from over 60 nationalities represented. And again, that's just in the first four classes. So we're really um, excited about them. They've already started over 60 student organizations that range from um, Model UN to um, club sports, to a big LGBT student organization, to a society of black scholars, and, and many more that are academically focused or just focused on identities or interests. Um, and there's a lot of support for starting new clubs and organizations as well, if there's something missing. And um, this is just a, a little glimpse into our campus. You can see here that this is uh, this is kind of like our um, uh, main building on campus, so the icon of campus, which brings in a lot of architecture from both, you know, in Asian style, but also that Duke um, Gothic arches. Um, so there is like a really um, a close connection between the two institutions, um, even in campus's blueprint. Um, for students who are admitted, we do have an international admitted student event. Um, in the past, we've been able to have that in China, but of course, with the pandemic, we've been hosting this more virtually over the last few years. But we do provide a lot of information because we know that moving to China is a big decision and, and going to another country for college is um, just, just another layer that you have to, have to um, think about when, when you're making your decision. We are on the common application. It's a free application. Um, and we have two application rounds with early decision and regular decision. Um, and all students who apply are automatically considered for scholarships and financial aid. You do need to submit your CSS profile um, for need-based aid, but we will award up to 100% of tuition. So thank you so much. Definitely check out our socials and please uh, shoot me a message if you have any questions. I'm gonna put my email um, in the chat as well. All right, thanks so much, Emily. Uh, next, we have Rachel with Eastern Mennonite University. Rachel, I think you're muted. Sorry about that, here we go again. All right, hi everybody. My name is Rochelle Sway. Um, I'm representing um, Eastern Mennonite University today. Um, this is a picture of our beautiful campus. Um, so EMU is located um, in Harrisonburg. Um, we are very conveniently located just a couple hours away from bigger cities like Charlottesville and Richmond or DC. Um, 
And Harrisonburg is located right in the middle uh, of the Shenandoah Valley. And with that comes the amazing um, opportunities for outdoors activities. So we have the George Washington National Forest or Shenandoah National Park to name a few of those outdoors um, spaces around Harrisonburg. Um, EMU have around um, 1,000 undergraduate students and our average GPA is around um, 3.7. And these are just pictures of um, our newly re renovated science center, which holds resources such as the physiology lab and the anatomy lab. Um, and going more into a little bit more about the academics of EMU, um, this is the list of majors. I won't uh, read every single one of them, but I just want to name some of the popular programs that we offer here at EMU. So we have nursing, biology, business administration, computer science, engineering, and education are some of the more popular programs on campus. Um, and with that, also just wanting to name a few stats. So we have um, 20, 20, 20, in 2020, 97% of our job seeking graduates were employed or in grad school within one year of graduation. Um, and a little bit more stats, 81% of our medical um, pre-med students were um, accepted into medical school, 74% accepted into PA and 90 PA programs, and 94% um, accepted into PT programs. 100% um, of our education grads um, secure a teaching position within one year of graduation. And similarly, 100% of our nursing grads also secure a position within one month of graduating. Um, and then also wanting to just mention 100% of our accounting grads who sat for the CP exam passed the exam. Um, and one reason for such a high success rate at EMU is because of the smaller class classes here at EMU. Um, we have an average of 16 students per class, a 10 to 1 student and faculty ratio. And with in that environment, you know, professors are not just professors, they really become your mentors and lifelong friends. Um, another reason for such a high success rate at EMU is because of the outside of classroom experience that we offer. So we offer a number of internship and practicums um, at EMU. On the left here is a picture of Ben Sook, one of our engineering graduates. And this is a picture of him in his full-time job job, um, which was turned into a full-time job after an internship during his undergraduate time at EMU. On the right is one an education major um, completing a practicum at a local elementary school. And also for our nursing students, um, as a part of their curriculum, they complete a clinical placement in multiple hospitals in patient care settings. <clears throat> also wanting to mention our DC internship program where you live in DC for a semester and intern with a DC-based organization or company. Um, with, uh, within your field of interest. Um, and one last thing that I want to mention um, with uh, the Out of Classroom Experience program is our intercultural program. This is where you will spend a semester abroad. Um, and with this program, you really get to break out of your bubble and see the rest of the world. Um, and these are just some example of the upcoming destinations. Um, um, one other reason to come to EMU is because of the amazing memories that you will made, make. Um, so EMU at EMU, students enjoy a number of campus activities um, weekly and annually. Um, there are also different ways to stay active on campus. So we have the fitness center and intramurals at EMU are um, always very fun. Um, and other ways to get involved in, on campus, we have a number of clubs and organizations. Um, if you want to start your own club, um, that's a you are absolutely welcome to do that as well. And we and here are just a list of student services that we offer also here at EMU. Um, and at EMU, we believe that the world needs more people who can work and grow together. And we do that through our mission and vision um, that are grounded in Christian discipleship, community, service, and peace. And one example of that would be our one of our alumnus, um, Lema Bowie, who went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize in 2011 for the impact that she brought to her home country of Liberia. Um, and then changing gears a little bit, wanting to mention a little bit about the athletics program here at EMU. So this is the list of the athletics program that we offer here at EMU. We are a part of the NCAA division three um, ODAT conference. Um, but if you're not interested in being being a collegiate athlete, do not worry. Um, the Finn experience at EMU is just as fun. Um, and last thing, wanting to touch on financial aid um, aspect of EMU, perhaps one of the more important decisions when it comes to college. 99% um, of our undergraduates received financial aid and over $20 million um, were 
um, awarded um, in aid by EMU in the 2020 and 2021 academic year. And on the right hand corner is the list of um, scholarships, grants and aids that we offer here at EMU. And so lastly, what's your next step? I would really encourage you to go ahead and um, complete the application um, and also um, visit our beautiful campus as well. Um, you can just go to emu.edu slash visit and also welcome you to um, browse through our different social media um, platforms. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks so much. Uh, next up we have Neil from Berto Education. Awesome, go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so very excited to talk to you all this evening about Verdo Education. My name is Neil and I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for Verdo in DC, Maryland and Virginia. So let's get started. So Verdo Education, we are essentially a study abroad program that offers a alternate pathway to higher education. Students will complete their freshman year abroad with us uh, over the course of you know, one or two semesters completing their general education requirements overseas, getting international experience at the same time, and then access to about 70 different colleges or universities through our partner consortium. So we kind of came about in that uh, we saw the benefits of a gap year um, and what they provide students in terms of success, determination, uh, retention at their next college, as well as aligning their major, their future path to study with their passions. So we aim to bridge the gap that was posed by the gap year uh, by making this part of the four-year college experience. So our students are not taking any time off from school. They are staying on track to graduate within four years. And uh, yeah. So how do we aim to achieve this? Uh, we are an academic program, uh, first and foremost. So our students will be taking 12 to 16 credits per semester. Uh, over the course of one or two semesters, this is to ensure that they will graduate on time. Uh, in addition to that, besides being a purely academic program, our students will gain the skills that you would expect in a gap year experience, um, in anywhere from uh, personal finance to uh, intercultural skills, cross-cultural communication, uh, and they will have access to Virto staff at all times in all of our locations. Uh, in addition, they get exposure to about 70 different colleges around the country. Uh, so it's really a lot of value here in terms of um, getting the international experience as well as exposure to these different colleges. So our students aren't rushed to make a decision about what their next four-year institution will be. We guide them through that process all the way. Uh, finally, we are uh, affordable. Uh, accessible in the sense that students will or can use federal financial aid with us. They submit their FAFSA to us. And based on their student aid report, uh, we can award uh, Virto grants and different scholarships. And usually about 50% of our students receive some combination of financial aid and scholarships to fund these experiences. So our application process is pretty simple. Uh, we are first and foremost looking for students that are open minded, they're curious, they're eager to explore the world. Um, in addition to that, we have a minimum GPA requirement of 2.5. We ask for a 500 word writing sample and unofficial transcript. So in many ways, we are similar to the common application. Uh, and using that same Virto application, students can apply to a number of our partner schools. Uh, we have a quick turnaround time. So uh, we can, on, on the Virto end, we can give an admittance decision within about a week uh, or so. And then with partner schools, if a student indicates that they would like to apply to partner schools through Virto, we will take on the cost of all the application fees for schools within our partner consortium, and then even accelerate the time uh, that it would take for a normal admittance decision. Um, and it, I just wanna also add that it's not a requirement to go on to a partner school. We support our students no matter where they end up, they will leave Virto programs as a typical transfer student with a college transcript. And really in terms of accessing any higher education institution, having that college transcript, uh, successfully completing courses, having international experience really is a benefit no matter where they're trying to go. It is not a requirement to stay a full year with Virto. 
um, students can complete just one semester with us if they chose to do so, all maintaining that four-year timeline. So they would arrive on the campus of their next institution as a either a second semester freshman or a first semester uh, sophomore. So we have about seven different campuses in the world, seven different locations, uh, all a little bit different in terms of our course offerings, um, as well as a sliding scale in terms of cost that generally corresponds to the uh, cost of living in that particular location. And to give an idea of that, um, I will take uh, Spain, Costa Rica, and Czech Republic on the lower end of our sliding scale, about $18,000 per semester before financial aid and scholarships. And uh, London, United Kingdom program at about $25,000 per semester, once again, before financial aid and scholarships. So in each of our courses, we will offer, uh, or in each of our locations, we'll offer courses that will fulfill those general education requirements, anything from a uh, uh, basic writing course to a history course to a digital photography course. We have en enough of a course catalog that students can stay in a single location for an entire year or take advantage of the opportunity to travel through Virto and experience two different countries, two different program locations uh, over the course of that freshman year. So uh, we have a heavy emphasis on experiential education. We aim to have about 20% of our course components to be experiential in nature. Um, this could be anything from studying environmental science in Costa Rica uh, with the flora and fauna in that country or studying art history in the city of Florence uh, using the city as a classroom. Our class sizes are small. We have about a one to 20 ratio in terms of professors to students. And we hire our own faculty in country. So generally they are citizens of that country uh, where they're taking place. And all of our courses are given in English. So we have unparalleled uh, first year support for our students. Uh, a lot of our students are first generation, about one third. Um, and this is in part part of our mission to make these experiences affordable and accessible. So while a third of our students are first generation, about a third are Pell eligible as well. And we aim to support our students for with every step of this journey, whether it comes to uh, applying for a visa, for uh, academic support in country, to everything from uh, just what life is like abroad and preparing them for that culture shock. And as I said, as a credit program, students can use federal financial aid with us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Neil. Uh, if you don't mind dropping your contact information in the chat so that way folks can see them, um, that would be really great. Um, and then last up, we do have Max from St. John's College. Hi. Um, I just want to let you know first, I'm not actually your admissions counselor. I'm a recent alum who is doing this as a favor. Our admissions counselor is busy with another fair. Um, anyway, so St. John's College is unlike any other college in America, as we have no focus whatsoever on majors. We have two campuses, one located in Annapolis, the other in Santa Fe, and every student studies the exact same program and graduates with a Bachelor in Arts in the Liberal Arts and um, a double major, double minor in Mathematics and Music. We are a great books program, which means we read the great books of the Western canon and discuss them in seminar style classrooms. At St. John's, we want you to learn how to think critically. We know you may think that a great books program only means studying philosophy and English. I want to let you know we also have a rigorous mathematics and laboratory sciences part of the program. You'll study Euclid and build the foundation of modern geometry by recreating the propositions needed. You'll move to the cosmos with Ptolemy and dive into the core of how and why mathematics truly operates. Later, you'll delve into mathematicians like Newton, Leibniz, and Kelvin, as well as the great scientists of history like Faraday, Maxwell, Einstein, and more. We have a very small and personal class size with an average student to faculty ratio of seven to one. It is highly encouraged that SJC students grow a close relationship with their educators, who we call tutors, and the school will even pay for any meal you invite a tutor out to. While we study a mostly fixed curriculum, we offer a robust grant program to empower students to grow a foundation in the career they want to pursue after St. John's. Outside class, we offer a variety of clubs, intramurals, and study groups. I also want to highlight that our two campuses, which I mentioned earlier, and although you follow the same curriculum, they offer a very different environment. 
In Nashville, you'll find a more classical experience in the capital of Maryland, well suited for anyone with an interest in business, government, or law. We also have a beautiful Santa Fe campus, excellent for an outdoorsy student who would feel at home on a hiking trail, rock shelf, or in a canoe. We can be found in the Coalition app, Common app, and SJC app. Uh, we are test optional and applications are free. We offer merit scholarships, but will obviously take FAFSA seriously into consideration. If you have any questions about the program, please feel free to ask, or any questions about admissions, student life, or what happens after graduation. I encourage you to also reach out to your admissions counselor, Petra Schaff Grisham at pcschaffgrisham at sjc.edu, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have myself at mcwright at sjc.edu. Um, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Fantastic. Thanks, Max. Um, so at this time, I'll ask if all of our presenters will turn their cameras on and we will jump into a question or two before um, we let everyone go for the evening. Um, and as a reminder, we'll go kind of in the same order that we did last time. So um, we'll start off with Al and kind of move forward in that direction. And the question I do want to ask first and foremost is what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Thank you, Amanda. I think one thing that I would want the students to remember about um, my school that I represent is um, everyone learns to be a follower and then everyone learns to become a leader. And in order to be an effective leader, you have to learn how to follow first. And that's one of the things that we build within the regimental life and our academic programs at Mass Maritime Academy. And it really sets students up to be jumpstart in their careers. And that's what employers really wanna see. They wanna see people that can think on their feet and not only follow, but lead. I think uh, for the University of Tampa, what I really want students to remember at our school is that we really have the best of both worlds, both on our campus and the surrounding area. Our faculty members are well experienced in their fields and we're able to provide opportunities for internships and experiences both on and off campus that are gonna set you up for great success after your time during school so that you not only have the education, but the experience to go along with that, to take that with you on your resume. Yeah, for Duke Quinchon, I think it's just important to remember that we are a joint venture institution. So we are a separate institution from Duke University in the US, um, but it is very much a US style um, school abroad. So we have a lot of privileges um, that, uh, that other Chinese universities don't typically have. I don't know if you've, you're familiar with the uh, the firewall in China and how a lot of um, just censorship exists in, in the classroom. That's not the case at DKU. Um, that is a privilege given to us where we have our internet routed from another country. Um, and uh, we have um, just completely free, like uh, academic freedom when it comes to what is discussed in the classroom. So I think that's the important thing. And then of course, when you graduate, you do earn both the Duke degree and the Duke Quinchon degree. Um, one thing I'd like everybody to, to remember about EMU is what I mentioned earlier in my presentation that um, because of the smaller class sizes, um, you really do get to build a relationship with your professors and that it's just, um, they become your mentor. Um, and I, I just think that's um, super valuable. Um, that contract with your professor doesn't end at the time you graduate. Um, even after graduation, you're able to go back to um, these friends that you've made, these um, experts who have become your friends for a recommendation. Um, Etc. Um, for to further your career, um, which I think is very valuable. I would say for any student that would participate in Berto education or any international experience is to uh, embrace the discomfort that that comes with uh, these kinds of experiences because that's where you'll find the most growth. So, really, just kind of take it in, uh, take the time to, you know, reflect on it, and really what you put in is what you get out from any kind of experience that you'll do, especially when it comes to being abroad and, you know, starting college at the same time. So we ask our students to be brave, to take that leap. And we've shown that we've done that with about, you know, with, with our first generation students. Fantastic. Max, do you have anything to add there? I believe you're muted. I was muted. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to say that if there's anything I want you to remember about St. John's, it's that we really want to, we want St. John's students to graduate, not with having like rotely memorized something, we want you to graduate with 
the ability to think very critically about what you're reading. We want you to know about the why, not just the what, and be able to take that. That's a skill we think you can take with you to any, any career whatsoever, um, no matter what it is, even though we don't focus on any specific path at our school itself. Thank you, Max. So uh, last question I have for the group, and we'll kind of go again in that same order, um, is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I think uh, one of the advice I would give uh, young people today is um, it's great to look at a school online. It's great to look at niche. It's great to look at brochures you get in the mail, but the only way you're really going to know if a school is right for you and where you're going to spend the next four years of your life to help launch your, your, your journey in life is to go visit those campuses. And when you walk away from those campuses, you will probably have a feeling one way or the other, if that's the right, right fit for you. Talk to the students that, that you meet on campus, make sure it's the right fit for you. Um, because if you don't, I think you're making a, a, a huge mistake because it's the biggest investment you're going to make in your life. And it's going to set, you on the journey for life. So go visit the campuses that are on your list. Yeah, I definitely wanna echo what Al said about finding the right fit for you. That's really important for our school. Uh, students need to be independent, especially coming so far from home. But just in general, in the general admission search, when you're looking at schools, broaden your horizons beyond what you think you want. A lot of school students will start searching, thinking they know exactly what they want, whether that's the big football team or whatever you see on TV. Definitely allow yourself to broaden your horizons as you begin that search. I think the advice I'd give is just to to remain open minded. I mean, I think that's kind of um, along what Emily was saying as well, but especially when it comes to things like um, finances and just just what it, what's available. I mean, there there are some really scary sticker prices out there for universities, and I guarantee the majority of students do not pay that sticker price. So, you know, do your research, um, talk with us, the admissions counselors with financial aid, and really just stay open minded um, in, in all the elements when you're looking at your um, college choices. Um, one of the, I guess, broader advice that I would give for the college admission process, but also for students going into college is um, to not be scared of being uncomfortable. I guess that's also echoing a little bit of what Neil said earlier, um, because I do think that you learn the most when you are in, in um, when you are um, out of your comfort zone. And so, um, yeah, just to um, not be scared to step um, out, out of what you're comfortable with. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to echo a lot of just what everyone has already said, but um, just to add on to a lot of this is, is to ask yourself the right questions, to really introspect, to think about, you know, very concretely, what do you want from this experience? Because a lot of people are going to be blinded by larger name schools or whatever it is, but by doing that, you are going to narrow your search. Um, but yeah, em embrace this comfort. I feel like I already <laughs> kind of touched on that, but it's, it's absolutely true. And be prepared for changing plans because oftentimes plans change and that's just a fact of life. And the more you can get used to that, the, the better it's gonna be for you. Yeah, I, I don't wanna repeat what everyone's already said. So I just wanna, I'm a very, very recent graduate, 21. Um, so I just wanna say that uh, when I was looking at colleges, for example, I found it most helpful not just to visit like everyone's recommended, but to actually make sure I spent time visiting classes themselves and actually it's like getting a taste of what the education is at that college. And that at least really helped me make my own decision. I really fell in love with how they did it here. And I think that you'll all find a college like that's like that for you. Amazing. Well, thank you all again so much to our panelists. Appreciate you taking time out of your evening or day, depending where you're at in the world. Um, and, and giving this time to the students to share this information about your schools. Um, for, the pan for the people who are attending the session, thank you for joining us. Um, and just so you know that when uh, you close this window, there will be a link with a very quick five, five question survey. Um, and we would appreciate any feedback that you've got for that and that you can provide us. We also encourage you to check back uh, the schedule and sign up for more sessions. We have a few more tonight. Um, and you'll be able to find this session's recording um, as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Virginia. Um, but with that, thank you all again um, and have a great evening.